Greetings. Today we will talk about one of the most sensitive, but at the same time very important topics, about ideology of Mussolini that entered history under the name fascism. This word has a pretty remarkable destiny. On one hand, people hear it very often. On the other, if you ask somebody, please define it, how do you understand it, they will start mumbling something about Hitler, about Nazis, about those who are against us. And the fascism can be different. But fascism is a very well-researched phenomenon. Let's see what it is. In 1997, a brilliant author, Umberto Eco, wrote an article, Il Fascismo Eterno, Eternal Fascism, where he outlined 14 signs that you are dealing with fascism. Despite the difference in rhetoric, all these signs were present in Italy, Mussolini, in Spain, under Franco, in Germany, under Hitler, and in many countries of Latin America, under different leadership. And what's concerning is that they're also starting to emanate in Russia. And let's go over these 14 signs and try to be honest in answering, can we see anything from them in modern Russia? Anyone can make their own conclusions. First, cult of traditions. Under fascism, some values of the society are selected to be traditional, and the truth is pronounced once and forever. One only is left to interpret its obscure meanings. For these regimes, superstition and occult mysticism are very characteristic, including on the very high level. Second, rejection of modernism. Fascist leaders love equipment, but equipment itself and not the ideas of education standing behind it which are the foundation of progress and development. Different opinions, free access to information, critical thinking, all that is evil as rationalism altogether, because it questions dogmas. Third, cult of action for the sake of action. Despicable attitude to scientists and leaders of culture was described in the Russian term least intelligent. Thinking is dangerous for fascism, and intellectuals are represented as marginals and rejected summarily. Fourth, disagreement is treason. Anybody who disagrees with us is either an enemy or a foreign agent. Five, racism. Fascism gains support by uniting people over similar fears. On fear over everything that is different and unlike. Sixth, survived humiliation. It relies on the classes that suffered, for the most part, from different political and economic crises. People who survived a degree of humiliation, who do not want to live through this experience again at any cost. Seventh, conspiracy theories. People suffering economically, being told that our country is surrounded by enemies. There are enemies around you, they want to conquer us. There are traitors inside the country, there are Jews and enemy agents around you. Eighth, ideas of injustice. Our enemies live better than we do. Their demonstrated wealth and prosperity is not deserved. We are poorer, but truth is with us. 9. Live to fight. For fascism, life doesn't have value. It's only important as a resource for the future fight with enemy. In the future, there will be a decisive battle, we will crush our enemies, and then we will build our bright future. That's why militarism becomes a religion of the country. 10. Elitism. Simple citizens are being presented as the best people in the world, and the leader is surrounded by new elites. The cult of power is being glorified, where enforcement agencies become some sort of nobility, and everybody above despises everybody who is below, and try to appease the ones who are above you. Whoever is stronger is right. 11. Cult of heroes. Heroic death is given as the desired outcome, and heroic actions of fallen heroes become templates for your behavior. 12. The cult of masculinity. All minorities who are not masculine or heroic enough are being despised. All kind of military games gain popularity, and females become a subservient members of society. 13. Unity. In ideology of fascism, minority follows the majority, and person do not have rights. Instead of person, it's people who have rights, and that will is being represented by leader and leadership party. Fourteenth, new language. Fascism always speaks its own language, usually very simplified, with certain words being forbidden. Usually vocabulary designed for critical thinking suffers first. 
And this is a very sad and very recognizable list. And you can't even say that Umberto Eco is accusing Russia. He was writing that essay when Putin was not even a president. He was a head of KGB at that time. Many of us in those years thought that all these things went to the dumpster of history. But unfortunately, Putin is following in the steps of Mussolini. Corporate government with close friends, billionaires, cult of war and weapons, glorifying war and continuous, we can repeat again, that freezes blood in the veins of real veterans. Wars with neighbors, military games with children participating, never-ending parades for falling heroes, and all that on the backdrop of declining economic prosperity of population. Prosecution of scientists and cultural figures, prosecution of minorities who nobody cared about until recently, a never-ending hunt for traitors, national traitors, a word that Putin's administration is so fond of using, reinstated and partly reinvented traditional pillars of society and obscure religious cults, stage-by-stage -stage blocking of internet and free speech, you're reading these 14 points and you're almost watching news of today. While we in Russia were glorifying the victory over fascism in Europe, it rooted right here. And the majority who thought that fascists are Hitler and Germans from the Second World War failed to recognize that. One thing that's good. There are no successful fascist regimes in history. They all end in the same fashion. And Putin's will not be an exception. Have a good day.